Okay, hi dude and dudettes. I just want to show you something before I moved these guys outside. This is the Larkspur. All these are started November 24th. This is the Larkspur on the Lee Valley system. I think this guy right here is actually a weed, though I have no idea what Larkspur looks like, so I'm going to leave it. But there are two really, really obvious ones right there. Here's a Chinese forget-me-not, which I've never grown before. New seed for this year. There's a little guy trying to come out there. So that's good germination. Purple tansy. Oops, sorry, purple tansy that I started way too early. I just start some again now. We got one germination. Now, funny story here. This is the Ireland Lupin that I brought back a few years ago. This guy somehow had traveled two trays over and was in here. And I accidentally put the wrong one, not looking. So I have him in the right spot. This is a Lupin. Um, but the one in front, whoops, did not go. This one right here is supposed to be the Dwarf Munstead Lavender Seed. I started without stratification. Pretty sure this is a weed, but I'm gonna leave it because I don't know what they look like from seed. That could be. It's kind of a long leaf, but like I said, I've never grown these from seed before. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The deep purple lavender, though, this is from West Coast Seeds, the English lavender. Look at that. This is where the lupin was. But that's a really good germination rate. These were not stratified or anything, I just popped them in. So that's awesome. So this whole set is going to go outside into my cold frame greenhouse now. Um, I did have them on the heat mat and West, or sorry, um, Lee Valley said that the heat doesn't go through these. It's been on this whole time because this guy's beside it and the soil is actually warm. It's not super warm, but it was warm. So I'm not sure what happened with the germination rate on all this stuff. Um, I did recently read a little email message to some of the gardeners that use Dutch starter soil, Dutch treat, and that's made by the do, 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 Eddie's, Eddie's Green Stuff, Eddie's Wholesale, that's the one. They make it, they don't list their ingredients so that they can change it every year, but it's inexpensive, it's always worked well. Um, I had a bag of last year's and a bag of this year's to use. And I happened to notice that the new stuff was a lot lighter brown than my other stuff. Um, and I wasn't the only one. So that could have been why these didn't pot up so nicely, or um, didn't start so nicely. They're now in potting mix as well, so I'm hoping that's going to help. Because usually my stuff all pops within three or four days when they're on the heat mat, especially these tomatoes, and they did not. It's very confusing. So anyways... These are being moved out because down here, I just started a bunch of flowers and I still have, not using these ones, I'm doing Charles Dowding's mass planting thing. I tend to like to do that for the random flower groupings rather than doing solo. So I have herbs to do still. Um, I got the greens to do still. And these ones here are the guys that need to be in deeper pots. So I have the Mexican Torch Tithonia. Um, tansy I'm going to try again in a little while because you're supposed to plant later anyway. Salvia and Sunflower. So those are going to be planting in larger pots. This is what I've already finished. And over here, I'm soaking some seeds. So we have two kinds of nasturtium in there. You can kind of see. Yeah, I've tip top Alaska as well as Jewel. The Jewel seeds from 2016, so I have no idea if it'll actually germinate. Um, over here, Oregon sugar peas, sugar and peas, which are my personal favorite. These are new to me this year. Note the difference. The Oregon sugar came looking like that, really plump. And the sugar and have always been very small like that. So it's going to be interesting. Maybe these ones weren't dried properly. Don't know. Both West Coast. 
And then over here is the West Coast Sweet Peas Multiflora, early Multiflora mix. And I haven't grown those before either. Add a bit more warm water for that. So you're supposed to soak them for 24 hours. I'm going to wait till tonight and then put them into larger pots so they're easier to develop and pull apart later on once they've sprouted. Um, I have made notes to myself this year because a couple of things are new for me. Blanket flower, I have never done. It's going into the wild bed and I have a little asterisk there. What it says is that they need to be transplanted almost ASAP. So as soon as they have popped up and have their first set of leaves, basically, they need to be pulled apart because they don't like having their roots messed with. So I planted pretty heavily and then put vermiculite on top of that. Over here, my first time growing as well, is phlox. I've never grown phlox. This is phlox cherry caramel. They say not to let it ever dry out, so I have a very thick coating of vermiculite on there. And again, a note saying quick transplant. Same as the blanket flower. Everything else I didn't put too much vermiculite on. Um, I just was very heavy handed on the phlox. And this one is empty because in these little Dollarama trays, which fit perfectly side by side on my lower rack here, they don't fit seed trays very well. So the little starter kit things, because they have this stupid bump and I don't know why they make that stupid bump there. It's so dumb. So nothing fits proper. Um, so I just cut down one of these dumb little jiffy pot things that you get kit wise. And then that's the same height for the most part. And because of that, now I can put the lid on top, no problem. That's my messy corner. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to get through these today because it's one of those things where you just get overwhelmed with the details. I'm going to try the mass planting like Charles Dowding is always talking about. I do it once in a while, but I've never done it for entire trays before because it's going to mean a lot of work in a few weeks, but I'm powered by the sun. So I'm hoping in a few weeks I will have more gumption to get out of bed and actually do things properly on my days off. And yeah, I'm going to pause here and I will show you the other things I'm potting up. I just thought doing so much at one point, it's a bit boring to watch the exact same thing over and over again. All right, pause. Please excuse the mess as I have definitely not organized this for spring yet. Um, with that rescue bunnies I have, I've been keeping their litter box garbage here with some litter box pellets right beside it and just been scooping at night. This is my cold frame. So the top two rows right now are planted with things I brought from outside or inside outside. Um, down below that is not sanitized yet and then middle shelf has been sanitized. It's mostly just trays for when things get potted up. So then we have a whole bunch of curly kale which I did not mark. So either it's curly kale or it's scarlet kale because I was going between the two but looking at it now zoom in there that looks like it's going to be scarlet kale or maybe this is kale this could just be the kale mix I put together yeah it's totally the cool kale mix cool kale mix I got a little bit of everything um, these are all save seeds you can tell they're starting to get a little bit leggy here because they're so close together that they're working and stretching for more light. So they are gonna be have to divide it up pretty soon. And these are some more of the sweet pea early multiflora. And I've oops attempted to trim them back a bit. So I have a bit more time before I to put them out. Just a little pinch off. And that will make them bushier. So the idea being that at the node, they're going to send off more flowers and then they won't be totally stringy little things. And you can see it's only half full because I planned on pulling them out as I pull out a dead seed. 
they're not supposed to stay in here. I didn't want the root system to be amazing, so this is going to come out in a couple days. I'm going to turn these around now. I put a thermometer in here for myself. This is Celsius and Fahrenheit. So you can see, whew, before I opened it, it was at 15 even. Now we're down to about 14 with the door open. It's a cool day today. But a little cooler down here and then up top as these greenhouse things go, a little bit warmer. And then up here, if I zip it all the way, it's my wildflowers. And I started these in January, as you can see. So these are going to the wildflower garden this year. I have some hollyhock mixed in. And I try to pinch some of those out in some areas and pop them in there and then seed it over what didn't grow. Um, this big batch right here, that's the Pacific Northwest Wildflower Mix. I've never grown it before. I'm looking forward to it. All my natives, a little bit of hollyhock in there. All my natives. Um, here... Well, this is supposed to be hollyhock seeds in there, but I think I might have interspaced them a bit. So there's hollyhock in there. Whoops. Just lost a baby. Oh, no. He's broken. Dead. Um, oh, here it is. Way back there. So it says plus lupin russell seeds, and this was plus hollyhock seeds. I'm guessing it was the same as this batch. That's hummingbird. That does not look like hummingbird. Pacific partial shade. I have no idea, guys. This was something. It's going to be flowers. So you can see there's some classic poppy growing in there. These are mixed cornflower. Uh, I've never grown them before. I didn't have very much soil left, so I just popped them in there. And these probably want to be potted up. They are dying. Help us. Look a little bit better back there though and then this is a little thing that i love so very very much it's a little sticky trap um, i have both sides sticky and it's for fungus gnats as you can see there's caught a couple last year i got a horrible infestation so i don't want that happening again um, and then down here is my little strawberry plant that i'm trying to grow from seed and it was looking like stuff might be popping up last time i looked yeah there's one Itty bitty green dude, you see him? I'm trying to make him centered, but he's right down the center. So I have no idea. That could be a weed. Who knows? But I'm turn these guys around so they're not stretching the entire way the wrong way. There you go. He's gonna go here that out. I can just go there and I think I'll move some down. Make room for these guys because these guys need more heat. They'll want to go on top so I think I might move this tray down. Pause. Okay they're in there ready to go. Um, this is the same tray I was just working with. You can see what I did inside is I had four of these long trays plus two long trays and a small guy. I prefer that. Didn't think of it before um, because they get more light obviously in the short trays versus this sadness. Uh, especially if you have a humidity dome on so I won't be doing the tall anymore. I actually have what I need. You can see all the kale here is currently unhappy. So I'm gonna leave this door open a bit today and then everything can get some fresh air while it's warm. I haven't watered them for a few days, but it's been, as you can see, there's a bit of humidity still inside this dome. So why bother at that moment? And then the big trays. So this little guy here is great. It could fit two, as you can see, two of the classic 20 inch by 10 inch trays side by side with room to spare. So that was awesome. Um, this I bought off Amazon. It's the extra large size. So a lot of the ones you buy with it, the spares down there, they don't quite fit nicely. 
and you get a lot of splits and seams breaking. So I got that because the one I had was ripped from wind and whatnot. But then you just simply get a new one. Zip this down. Oh, right, it's gonna leave it open. I know what I'm doing. I totally know what I'm doing. And you can see here I have these Dollarama clips. So I'll flop that open. Keep that up. And everything, whoops, can have a little bit of sunshine today. And how my cold frame is, it's actually kind of under shade stuff. Um, the interesting part is it's not clear, it's black, it's supposed to be black. It is warmer under here than it is in the full sun during the heat of the summer. So though they don't get direct UV that burns them, they'll get a little side. Because they get a little bit of light over there. Um, they get a lot of warmth under here in the summer. But they don't get a lot of UVs. So they don't burn super easy. So that's why I've been using this section now for um, hardening things off. Pretty much directly. I just pop it out. And yes, last year, sorry, I did it with Abandon because I just did not have the time for anything more finicky like I usually would. And it worked out great. So screw it. Do what is easy. And then over here, I have little trays. Rather than doing um, drawers where you can't see anything, we just have a tray and I pull out little seed mat trays with all my tools that I need. And I have my horticultural fleece down there too for when the brassias, brassicas go out. But yeah, down here, this needs an organize. That's just sad. Anyway, you guys have fun um, with your gardening. Today is a beautiful day. Annie the helper is currently enjoying having her fleecy out in the grass. And yeah, overcast, but not too bad. Have a good day, guys. Bye.